Hello, and welcome to More Than Words, a podcast about treating the whole child brought to you by the Reading and Language Learning Center. Each episode, we bring in a wide variety of experts from psychologists to clinicians to provide you with resources to use on the journey to helping your child or client. I'm your host, Tristan, and today I'm joined by autism specialist Dr. Jeffrey Kranzler to discuss bullying and anxiety for children with autism. Hi, Jeffrey. How are you? Uh, I'm uh, doing all right. It's great to be here. Awesome. We're very excited to have you here. This is a great um, topic to discuss. So we're happy that we could have an expert come and chat with us on it. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. So let's just start off with having you introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Uh, So I'm Dr. Jeffrey Kranzler. I am a therapist who specializes in working with Uh, individuals on the autism spectrum across the lifespan. I've started a group practice called CAPS, Kranzler Autism Programs and Services. And if anybody's interested, can check out more about it at capscommunity.com. That's CAPS with a K. Um, And uh, I just, I absolutely love my work uh, that I do. It is not work. It is a passion. It is a calling. Um, and really excited to be working together with um, other people who are just as passionate um, and as skilled and as talented as I am um, because they've poured their heart and their soul uh, into this. Um, I also uh, work for the National Mentoring Resource Center where I help uh, uh, mentoring programs set up uh, programs for um, immigrant and refugee youth Uh, And I have uh, written a book called The Crimson Protector, uh, which teaches kids about, uh, which teaches, it's a superhero novel adventure, which in the course of it, without being a textbook or a workbook, teaches kids how to overcome uh, social anxiety, handle bullying, and uh, build their confidence. Wow, that is fantastic. And I definitely want to touch more on that later. Um, But you mentioned your website, which is Caps with a K. Yep. Okay. Capscommunity.com. Capscommunity.com. So that's where people will find you online. And if people were looking, do you have like a, an office or something where people can come see you physically or are you just online at the moment? Well, at the moment we're all virtual, but the hope is to get back into the office, which will be in the Bethesda, Maryland area uh, as soon as possible. Awesome. Okay. Good to know. So if people need to check that out, um, and as soon as you guys can be, you know, in person, people have that option available, um, and they can see where you are online. It's awesome. awesome. And I'll make sure to put everything in the show notes for people. So if you're, if listeners are looking for that, um, you'll be sure to find it there. Well, if you are ready, I'm ready to hop right into chatting about this very important topic. Sounds great. Let's go. (laughs) Amazing. Um, so our first question is just, is it true that students with autism are more likely to experience bullying than their typically developing peers? Anybody who's different is a target for bully. bullying. Bullying, um, uh, the bullies go for the people who are different. In fact, bullies go for people who look different, uh, people who speak differently. Uh, there has been a lot of documentation of people who bully uh, cancer victims um, it, oh. it literally, there is no, um, th- there's no boundary that won't be co- crossed, uh, by bullies. Um, and, and, and the point of bullying is not that somebody is in pain and they want to express that to others. Uh, bullying is done by people who are, uh, brighter than average, who are more well adjusted than average, who are more socially skilled than average. And it is done as a power grab. Um, it, people who do it, or people who are successful at bullying are ones who know how to get under people's skin. And the point of it is through the bullying for them to attain a higher social status. Wow. That, <laughs> I guess as a child, you never think of it that way, obviously. Right. But that is such an interesting way to look at bullying and like, you know, uh, such a hard pill to swallow that you would think someone would really try to do that. Absolutely. It, it, it's, it is difficult. And I think a lot of times people want to think otherwise, right? Uh, because uh, it, it is the, the reality of it is a, a whole lot um, more difficult than 
you know, the common uh, misconception that like, oh, these are kids who are struggling. They don't know how to uh, to connect. Um, and um, the, the being close to and uh, understanding the reality of the situation is a lot more effective because it allows the interventions to be uh, more effective. Right. So speaking of intervention, what can parents do on their own to kind of help their their children deal with bullying at school? So one of the things to, to remember is that bullying is not an individual issue. It is a uh, institutional issue. And that the beginning of dealing with this is from an institutional level. When an institution uh, looks the other way or has um, policies or systems in place that allow space for bullying, um, that, that makes anything that you're going to do uh, extremely difficult. The first and foremost um, is parents communicating regularly with the school and getting a sense, by the way, of whether the school is uh, competent in dealing with it, whether they have policies and procedures in place. Uh, you know, we are recording this in 2021, and the hope is that as opposed to 1980s, 90s, and, e and even the aughts, that schools will have uh, a level of education uh, about bullying um, and should have uh, pieces in play. If your institution is um, struggling with that, uh, that is something to really, um, even before kind of going to that, really going and advocating for a school to have a you know true effective policy. Uh, just because somebody has a bullying policy doesn't mean it is uh, up to date. Right. or is uh, good, but the institution needs to be on board because if the institution is not on board, it becomes a whole lot more difficult. Uh, so reporting is essential, especially since um, reporting one time is a disaster uh, because it cr increases the bullying uh, and it's the repeated reporting. It is the ongoing reporting, which is necessary. So knowing that the ongoing reporting is needed for the institution. It's about having a trusted adult at the institution, figuring out with your kid who uh, they can trust at the um, at their school uh, to be a support for them. Uh, in addition to that, uh, working with your child, I mean, um, the book that I wrote has a lot of the techniques uh, that parents want to teach their children how to handle it. It's not about ignoring. Uh, there are some very effective ways to uh, to deal with bullying, um, and that that includes um, being surrounded by friends, uh, in, especially in vulnerable times of the day, at lunch times, in between classes. It's harder to bully somebody when they're with friends. So encouraging uh, your child to be close to a group uh, of people, finding allies, um, and basically reacting in a way to the bullying that isn't ignoring it, nor is it about getting upset about it. Um, but it's almost, uh, even if it's feeling different inside, feeling awful inside, it's about showing actively that the bullying is not getting to you and that the bullying is, is kind of uh, juvenile or sophomoric. Um, and so, uh, you know, more than what we can do actually in this one podcast, um, but there are, uh, you know, there's some great literature out there um, uh, to, for parents to continue to read. Um, but, but the key really, really is, uh, getting the institution on board. Um, and, and the institution should be on board, whether it's in the building or outside of the building, when right. the students are involved who are at a school, it's the school's business, whether it's on school grounds, whether it's uh, online. Um, and so the institution needs to be on board, uh, with helping with this. Wow. That is really good to hear because I think that most parents will focus in on, on their, at the child level very individually. And they, of course, it's good to teach your kid their own skills. Um, but hearing the institutional level is really interesting um, because I think most parents wouldn't immediately do that. I think that the the reaching out one time is very easy to do, but it's the the consistent reaching out and, you know, reporting of incidents like that, that I think some parents miss. So that's good to hear and important to know. Yeah. So on the flip side, you know, kind of at, we talked about the institutional level, but outside of that, when should parents reach out to a professional if they're not seeing like, you know, kind of the institution take charge or if they're still seeing issues and they're kind of concerned? Immediately. And that's whether the institution is in charge or whether it's not. 
One of the things that's incontrovertible is the uh, research that shows the impact of consistent bullying uh, on kids and it branches from everything from uh, school uh, refusal all the way to significant depression. And it doesn't just go away once the bullying stops. So being um, contacting a mental health professional is key in helping uh, your kid uh, your child develops strategies. You know, ch children have a tendency to be more open to strategy development from non-parental ad uh, adults. So even if you are teaching the right strategies, having a professional treat, uh, you know, teach that it may be um, much more um, much more effective. And uh, the other piece is uh, again to process the emotions and also to engage in some therapy to recognize um, how to internally. Uh, deal with the bullying so that it doesn't become a mindset of negativity where people are seeing themselves as something less um, and, and really viewing themselves through the eyes of the bully. Um, it can't hurt to reach out or immediately. Um, it, it could hurt the wallet, in all honesty. I wish that uh, therapy was was more, more affordable. Right. Um, but in terms of a child's health and well-being, it is so key to get involved early and um, to really uh, reach out for a therapist whose specialty is in uh, bullying, helping uh, children react to bullies, if that's not their specialty, um, you, you really want to look for somebody who specializes in it. Okay. Very good to know. And on the topic of mental health, um, anxiety, which is something that is often treated in therapy, um, it's often also comor comorbid with autism, right? Yeah. So. What are some of the things that parents can do at home to help alleviate anxiety, especially if they're doing the therapy thing and they want a little bit of like a boost? So again, the key piece is to be working with the professional. You know, if your, your child uh, had sprained their ankle, you're not trying to, or, or, you know, had a broken bone, you're not starting at home and then heading off to the hospital. Right. Um, this is just because it can't be seen doesn't mean it's any different. You want somebody who is a professional because anxiety is truly a clinical, um, a clinical issue. Everybody has some degree of anxiety, but when anxiety reaches an overwhelming point, then it's time to have guidance from a professional. And, and I really mean guidance, uh, being involved with a professional who's going to give you pointers and tips how to be a, a part of the solution. But really, again, your child will take more instruction from non-parental adults as well. Anxiety uh, is comorbid, um, and I, I'm not crazy about that term uh, because uh, autism is not a disease, it's a difference. But anxiety is present because uh, the world is not created uh, in 2021 for individuals on the autism spectrum. Right. Uh, individuals on the autism spectrum struggle with sensory processing pieces, and right. the world is nonstop sensory overload. Uh, there is struggles with um, social skills. A lot of the things in social skills that come naturally to neurotypicals aren't coming natural to individuals on the autism spectrum. And expecting them to know that is expecting is, is similar to expecting somebody to be fluent in uh, astrophysics without having extreme amounts of classes <laughs> and, uh, and training. And that's right. what individuals on the autism spectrum deserve is training in, in the social skills because if you have no clue what to do and people are demanding that you know it's extremely difficult it's like showing up to your job as an astrophysicist without your college degree or master's I, I would have i don't know about you but i would have a lot of anxiety oh yeah. uh, that, you know throughout it um and so it's again about giving the skills both uh, helping kids with handling the sensory uh difficulties uh, as well as handling and, and developing their social skills uh, and in addition, developing flexibility, um, struggle, you know, there's so many, uh, you know, benefits and boons of being on the autism spectrum. There are also challenges. And one of the challenges is flexibility and getting stuck. And with an ever-changing world, in a world that really can't always uh, be uniform and predictable, um, being able to develop that flexibility is really key. And that involves uh, starting out with a, a good evaluation to not only figure out whether the diagnosis is correct, but what other pieces may be going on, reaching out to see if a speech language pathologist, occupational therapist, um, or a uh, mental health professional would be best to address the different pieces um, to help alleviate that anxiety. 
Yeah. So the, you, you talked about like different kinds of therapists and, um, different kinds of therapy. So what do you find is the most beneficial in helping students who are on the spectrum deal with bullying and anxiety, but also the social interaction and all the different social skills? So from an anxiety perspective, that's really in the realm of the therapist. If it's truly an anxiety piece, um, we, it should be a therapist who's using cognitive behavioral therapy. Um, dialectical behavior therapy can be huge. Uh, mindfulness are all modalities that can be really help of help there. Uh, with bullying, again, a therapist who's uh, skilled and trained in that is, is the key. When it comes to social skills, there are therapists who do it. And in my practice, we do a, a, a lot of social skills. That's a key piece. Okay. If that is a piece, you know, uh, that is, you know, so only on its own, it's something a, a speech language pathologist can help with. From a sensory perspective, um, there is a limitation on therapists uh, because it is uh, a non-physical kind of intervention. Uh, so they can mitigate difficulties with sensory uh, problems. They can give, what I mean by that is they can give strategies to handle an overwhelming sensory experience or an underwhelming because it's not just hypersensitivity, it's also hyposensitivity right. where individuals on the autism spectrum are seeking higher levels of stimulation, which also provides uh, challenges. But when it comes to um, desensitizing or resensitizing uh, whatever the case may be, uh, that's really in the realm of the occupational therapist. So uh, a lot of times there may be a need for a team rather than an individual uh, involved. Okay. That's interesting to hear too. I, um, sometimes people think you just have the one person. So good to hear that the same concept of it takes a village um, applies here too. Yes. So we talked a little bit about um, resources and things of that nature, but I want to get back to this book that you wrote um, that seems that it is specifically for bullying and anxiety with um, for children who are on the autism spectrum. So can you elaborate on that? Tell us all about this book. I would love to. So it's actually a book that would be highly beneficial to uh, individuals on the autism spectrum, but it's actually not specifically geared for them. It's really geared for everybody. Um, it is a middle grade fiction book, which means it's really geared for, you know, fourth, uh, an advanced fourth grade reader all the way through the end of middle school and perhaps first year of high school. And it is a superhero adventure novel. It follows uh, the adventures of a middle schooler named James Gast and who is dealing with uh, witnessing a lot of bullying and feeling very powerless to help it. Um, who has social anxiety, who has a lack of confidence. And this book is not a workbook. It is not a fill in the blanks or, a, okay, let's sit down and get to work. What this book does is it teaches skills by having kids see how the character encounters situations, fails in situations, and then overcomes them. And I think that's the most effective way to teach uh, because kids automatically push things away when it seems like schoolwork. And the other piece is when you have a good piece of fiction, you're not just reading fiction, you're living fiction. Right. So if they can really connect to the character, they're living the failures and the outcomes of the failures, they not, you know, the ineffective ways of doing things. And then they're actually living the effective ways to handle things. And in there, this character has a journey, a real life journey where there is challenges. Um, and then the character overcomes them to build confidence, uh, which again helps the readers build their own confidence to overcome social anxiety, same thing, and to handle bullying as a bystander as well as uh, a victim in a very um, organically learned way, uh, in a way that is uh, supported by the research um, and so I, I'm really proud of it. The, the feedback I've gotten from it is fantastic. Uh, parents will tell me that after their child reads the book, uh, they'll start conversations with their parents about bullying they've experienced, wow. social anxiety they have. I have uh, parents of kids who uh, don't read books, who struggle with reading uh, for attentional reasons. Um, kids with ADHD have read the book from start to finish in one sitting. Uh, oh kids, who are, kids who are not interested in superhero books 
have started the book and read it in one sitting. So I, I, I've just been really, really excited about uh, the, the feedback. You know, on it's available on Amazon and it's a five star rating. Uh, parents, therapists, teachers, kids themselves um, are really posting the impact that it has. Um, so it's not just fun. It, it really is changes. Um, it makes the changes that parents are hoping for. And it's, and it's, it's very, um, uh, it's a worthwhile read. Kids actually want to, the, the cover of the book, uh, was drawn by an actual, uh, comic book artist, somebody who worked wow. for Marvel comics, somebody who worked for DC comics. Um, so the, you know, can't judge a book by its cover, but if it's struggle to, uh, get a kid to read, I can, I can tell you that that cover is really, really helpful. Wow. Um, so, uh, it's something I'm excited about. I'm really excited about getting it in the hands of parents and, uh, getting in the hands of kids. That is fantastic. And it sounds like such a joy to read and almost lit. like, like you said, it's like, it's not a workbook. And so these kids don't feel like, you know, they're sitting down to do more homework. It sounds like they're sitting down to read their favorite book and they're getting immense amounts of help along the way. So that is so cool. Wow. 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 So thank you so much for sharing that. Oh, it's my pleasure. You know, you sit down, they're sitting down to read a fun superhero adventure and they walk away without knowing skills for handling bullying and skills for handling social anxiety and building their confidence. And that's it. that's exactly what I was hoping to do. And that's the feedback that I'm getting. So uh, really excited to have uh, been able to put that out. That's awesome. So I'll make sure to link that. You said it's on Amazon. I'll make sure to put it in the show notes for people to find that. Um, it's and- also, uh, you can also learn more and get it on uh, thecrimsonprotector.com. It's called, the book's called The Crimson Protector. Uh, so it's uh, thecrimsonprotector.com. Or if you type that into Amazon, it will give you uh, the, uh, it will bring that book up and will give you the opportunity to uh, purchase it. Perfect. So I'll link the website and I'll put the Amazon link in there. They've got both places to look for it. Um, that's, ah, that's amazing. And I'm looking at the comic now and it's superb, like truly a fantastic comic, like, you know, design and artwork and everything. It's so cool. Wow. Well, those are all the questions I had, but if you have any other like tips or anything else you want to share with us, please feel free to add it in. So I just want to kind of end end it with the, the the key belief that not only I have, but that the professionals uh, who work with individuals on the autism spectrum are are coming to understand. And I wish more professionals would understand this. Um, it is something I believe strongly and have from the very beginning is that autism is not a disease. It is not a disability. Um, and it is not a disorder. It is a difference. Uh, gingivitis is a disease. <laughs> Nobody ever had gingivitis and said, well, now I can run faster. Um, autism is a difference because you have autism and certain things become incredible. Like when you find a topic, an area of interest, you can engage in it better, remember more of it, uh, do it for and in, in, engage and work on it for extended amounts of time with extended amounts of focus, right. uh, the creativity that is involved, uh, the honesty and the straightforwardness, which again, sometimes presents challenges uh, because part of you know, what we expect at times as neurotypicals is white lies. Um, <laughs> and I say, you know, I have to teach my neurotypicals how to tell the truth and I got to teach uh, my autistic individuals how to lie a little bit. And that's yeah. just a beautiful thing about autism. I, I've got to work with you to lie. You know, so like to say, okay, it's okay to say like, you know, that suit looks really good when in fact it is, you know, red with purple polka dots. It (laughs) definitely does not. Um, So, um, you know, and so working with these individuals to me is I'm not working with sick people. I am working with highly talented individuals who are living in a world created by and maintained by neurotypicals right. in a way that works against. So the, the working with autistic individuals is not about curing a disease. We don't want, even if you could eliminate autism, we would not want to. Right. Eliminating autism means eliminating people like Albert Einstein, Steve Jobs, um, uh, Elon Musk, uh, Mozart, 
Jerry Seinfeld, uh, all individuals who have uh, who have autism and the people who really move the world forward. Right. Uh, so I, I want parents to walk away with that. We are working to mitigate the impacts of a world, not to cure something that not only cannot nor no, it cannot be cured. And we are not working to cure something because it should not. Right. Because it is absolutely necessary for our world to function. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you for that. That I think that is important for most people to hear. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here and sharing all of this information. I think a lot of parents will really appreciate this. Um, even parents without children on the autism spectrum, parents that have children that are just simply being bullied, this is fantastic information for them to receive. So um, I really appreciate you being here. It is my pleasure. Um, and I uh, really, uh, really enjoy being a resource uh, for people, whether, you know, the part of the practice, whether the reading book or not, um, just being able to get uh, the beliefs that I have about autism, uh, the approaches that I have towards bullying, towards anxiety. Um, it, it, it's an honor and it's a calling to be able to support individuals uh, who are looking uh, to, to understand and to react in, in the best way. So uh, it's an absolute pleasure and, uh, and a, a gratitude that I have for you for giving me this opportunity um, to, to, to put put, put all of this out there. Yeah, of course it's needs to be out in the world. So we appreciate you being here. All righty. Well, thank you to everyone for listening today. Um, again, I'll put everything in the show notes that we discussed and don't forget to subscribe and leave us a little review and, um, give a little shout out, especially for this such an important topic. Um, but anyway, thank you guys for listening and hope you have a great rest of your day.